Welcome to part 11 on how the 18th Cadian Army Group is organised. And in this episode we'll be exploring the static artillery units of the Astra Militarum. Ranging from the Earthshaker platform, the Hydra platform, the Manticore, the Rapier, Sabre gun platforms and the Tarantula sentry gun. In this video I have split this video into chapters so making it a lot easier to navigate when it comes to understanding the narrative of a particular unit. And remember, for me to make more content for your viewing pleasure, if you've enjoyed this video, please consider to hit the like button, as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't, and hit the bell button so you won't miss another video. And furthermore, there's more information at the last chapter of this video and how to support me further. You can support me on Patreon those that support me on Patreon will be greatly appreciated and will be featured in the end credits of this video. So that's the quick announcements, now let's get stuck into the narrative series on the gun platforms of the Astra Militarum. The Earthshaker Platform Weapons platforms such as the Earthshaker are heavy weapons used by the Imperial Guard. Unlike their self-propelled cousins, these platforms must be towed into position, typically by their own dedicated transport, which doubles an ammunition carrier. These platforms are commonly used to defend common posts, forward supply depots, or reinforce battlefield strongpoint. Each Earthshaker platform mounts the same Earthshaker cannon found on a basilisk on a standard circuphone platform. They are one of the most common weapons used in artillery companies, especially during prolonged static campaigns where they can stay still in the same position for weeks battering the enemy. Normally dug in far to the rear, on occasion an Earthshaker will be brought forward for direct fire in support of friendly forces. Each one is crewed by a team of five guardsmen in order to keep up a good rate of fire. In a pinch, a minimum crew of four can suffice. Although this is less than ideal, only the Trojan support vehicle is powerful enough to tow this platform into position. Each Earthshaker platform normally has its own Trojan to move it, and also to carry extra ammunition during the prolonged fire missions. Using standard five powder charges, the Earthshaker can reach out to approximately 16 kilometers with a 38 kilogram shell. The Earthshaker platform artillery crew consists of five members. Number one being the commander, number two being the gunner, number three, four and five are the loaders. Starting off with the lowest insignia, Number one, the commander, is of the rank of Guardsman 2nd class, whereas the rest of the artillery crew are that of Guardsman 3rd class. The next highest rank is that of a Lance Corporal, also known as a seasoned Guardsman, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of Guardsman 2nd class. The next highest rank is that of a Corporal, also known as a Senior Guardsman and the rest of his artillery crew are that of Guardsman 2nd class. The next highest rank is that of a Sergeant, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of Guardsman 2nd class. The next highest rank is that of a Staff Sergeant, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of Guardsman 2nd class. The next highest rank is that of Sergeant 1st class, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of Guardsman 2nd class. And finally, the highest rank obtainable for the Earthshaker platform artillery crew is that of Master Sergeant, and the rest of the artillery crew, again, are that of Guardsman 2nd class. The Hydra Platform the Hydra platform utilises the same quad autocannon turret as found on the Hydra flak tank, 
they are typically deployed to defend important static targets against air attacks such as bridges, command posts and airfields. Hydra platforms are typically towed into place by a Trojan vehicles. The Hydra flak platform artillery crew consists of five members. Number one being the commander, number two being the gunner, number three, four and five are that of the loaders. Starting with the lowest rank, number one, the commander, he is of the rank of guardsman second class, whereas the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsman third class. The next highest rank is that of a lance corporal, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsman second class. The next highest level, when it comes to the ranking system, is that of a corporal, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsmen, second class. The next highest rank is that of a sergeant, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsmen, second class. The next highest rank is that of staff sergeant, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsmen, second class. The next highest rank is that of Sergeant First Class, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of Guardsman Second Class. And the highest rank obtainable for the Hydra Flak Platform Artillery Crew is that of Master Sergeant, and of course, the rest of the artillery crew are that of Guardsman Second Class. The Manticore Weapons Platform. The least common of the weapons platforms, the Manticore platforms are equipped with four Manticore missiles. This makes them highly versatile and able to fulfill multiple roles, from air defence to offensive bombardment. Depending on the warhead with which they are armed, such is the value of these platforms that it is a standard practice to defend a Manticore site with a dedicated squad or platoon. Each platform can be towed into place by a Trojan vehicle. The main forge worlds where the Manticore platforms are produced include Voss, Ganea, and Styges 8. The Manticore artillery platform crew consists of five members. Number one being the commander, number two being the gunner, and number three, four, and five are that of the loaders. Starting off with the lowest rank, number one, the commander, he is of the rank of guardsman second class, whereas the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsman third class. The next highest rank is that of a lance corporal, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsman second class. The next highest rank is that of a corporal, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsmen second class. The next highest rank is that of a sergeant, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsmen second class. The next highest rank is that of a staff sergeant, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsmen second class. The next highest rank is that of sergeant first class, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of guardsmen second class. And finally, the highest rank obtainable for the Manticore platform artillery crew is that of Master Sergeant, and the rest of the artillery crew are that of Guardsman Second Class. The following STCs when it comes to the static artillery units are as follows. The Cruciforum Earthshaker platform, the Cruciforum Hydra platform, the Cruciforum Manticore platform and the Cruciforum Flak Cannon platform of which we know very little about when it comes to the narrative. The stats and information and background behind this particular unit has yet to be discovered as it currently remains classified for the time being. The Sabre Gun platform and that of the Reaper Laser Destroyer has already been covered in a previous video. 
please check out part 3 of the narrative series video for more narrative background and information in regards to how they are organised. These units are still characterised as our static artillery pieces as they do represent a battlefield role similar to that of the previous units we've looked at in this video. The Tarantula The sentry gun, more commonly referred to as the Tarantula, is an Imperial automated mobile weapon system based upon the ancient Imperial technology. Useful in a variety of roles, it is most notably used by Imperial Guard but it is also utilised by the groups of including the Adeptus Astartes and the Adeptus Arabitites. The exact origin of its nickname is unknown. Also, it is fair to assume that their multi-legged appearance can be attributed in part to this. It is said that some veteran guardsmen venerate this arcane device that saved their life on more than one occasion. It is not unheard of the dedications of the sentry gun's machine spirit to be found reverently placed around it. This practice is frowned upon by most Imperial commanders and commissars have been known to issue severe penalties to any guardsman caught in participating in such acts of unsanctioned worship. The main forge worlds of the Tarantula's origin are Lucius, Machan, Voss, and Metallica. The Tarantula is controlled by a simple logic engine and infused with the machine spirit which allows it to operate without a controller. However, due to its limits in logic engines targeting capabilities, it must be preset to fire in one of three distinct modes prior to being deployed into battle. In point, defense mode, the Tarantula will fire at targets that enter its fixed firing arc, designed to cover a particular area of the battlefield. The sentry mode is meant to close defence of the Tarantula's immediate area, allowing it to traverse completely to engage targets, though at a shorter range. When engaged in interceptor mode, the Tarantula engages enemy aircraft, such as drop pods, which attempt to land in the area. Each Tarantula includes its own targeting ore specs and onboard power cell. Though it is possible to hook multiple sentry guns to a single power generator for prolonged use, once deployed, the weapon system will continue to operate until it has run out of ammunition or it is destroyed and, unlike normal sentries, won't doze off or daydream while on duty. Many types of sentry guns exist, although the two most common variants are equipped with either the twin heavy bolters for anti-infantry or twin las cannons for anti-tank duty. The uses for these sentry guns are many and varied, from defending a perimeter, from a surprise attack to establishing a roadblock or operating as part of a static defense line. However, their lack of inherent mobility restricts their use on the fluid battlefield. A tarantula can be carried on the back of a chimera or by a valkyrie. In addition to their normal passenger complement, tarantulas can even be airdropped via graf chute and deployed packaging traits. Drop regiments such as the famous Elysian drop troops often use sanctuary guns equipped with graf chutes dropped from valkyrie airborne assault carriers to help form a defence perimeters around captured objectives, especially when using them as part of the Castilian Sentry Gun Defence Force. Arbite sentry guns are often used for crowd control and riot suppression, in addition to defending their percent houses. The following is a quick overview of all the enlisted ranks and long commission officer ranks in this particular video starting with lowest to highest. Guardsman 3rd Class Guardsman 2nd Class Seasoned Guardsman aka Lance Corporal Senior Guardsman aka Corporal Sergeant 
Staff Sergeant. Sergeant First Class and Master Sergeant. Thank you for watching this episode on how the Cadian Army Group is organised when it comes to the static artillery units of the Astra Militarum. In the next episode we'll be exploring more in depth detail about the armoured personnel carriers a quick overview of the Chimera, of which its cousins are the Chimerax, the Chimerodon, the Chimero, the Torox and the Torox Prime, the Pegasus Command Vehicle, the Pegasus AFV, the Pegasus AAV, the YT-9 and the SC-3 Carrier. For more information on how to support the channel, do check out the end credits or the last chapter of this video. Thank you for watching and happy wargaming. For honour and for glory and for Cadia, Cadia will stand. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Leave a comment below as to which is your favourite unit, formation, or what Imperial Guard Regiment you collect, and please subscribe to the YouTube channel for more upcoming content, and hit the bell button so you'll be notified about the next episode, and share this video with as many people as possible. Do check out my social media pages for more pictures and information. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to support my channel, there are plenty of ways to do so. Head over to the Etsy store today to grab exclusive merchandise. If you want to book up a game with me, do contact me through my email address. And then, of course, I'm on Patreon. Patrons help support the channel tremendously. These are all the current members that are supporting me right now, and I'd like to thank them all very much for continuously supporting the channel. Without their support, this content would not be possible. There are 20 tiers to choose from. Whether you choose the Cadians or that of the Ultramarines chapter, any donation, however big or small, will be greatly appreciated. And a big shout out to my sponsors. Goblin Gaming, Siege Studios, GameMap.eu, The Magnet Baron, and Southwood on Sea Wargames Group, aka SSWG. Goblin Gaming have very kindly set up an affiliation link for my channel. Using the affiliation link, when purchasing items for all your hobby needs, help support the channel in a big way. Do check out the Striking Scorpion 82 Plus channel website for monthly content when it comes to unique videos and that of extra battle reports and Tactica videos. More information featured in this video is in the video description below. Thank you for watching and happy wargaming.